I'm Rena Agarwal, Robert E. McDonough Professor of Finance and Director of the Georgetown Center for Financial Markets and Policy. Welcome to Georgetown University and welcome to the McDonough School of Business. We are absolutely delighted to once again partner with the Chamber of Digital Commerce to organize this DC Blockchain Summit 2017. Perry Ann Boring and the Chamber are a strong voice in promoting acceptance and use of digital assets and blockchain technology. Therefore, we are delighted to be partnering with the Chamber. Just a little bit about Georgetown, in case uh, for those who are not uh, familiar. Georgetown is one of the world's leading academic and research institutions offering a unique educational experience that prepares the next generation of global citizens to lead and to make a difference in the world. The mission of the Georgetown Center for Financial Markets and Policy is to provide thought leadership for global finance. The center offers innovative, influential, and thoughtful commentary. The center sponsors research that impacts practice and policy. We host dialogues and conferences like this one involving scholars, practitioners, and policymakers on key financial market issues. Through these activities, the center contributes to an informed public discussion regarding critical debates about global issues. We believe it is the responsibility of Georgetown University to provide unbiased analysis that can guide both market participants and policymakers. The center has become the go-to place and it has the ability to convene people from business, policy bodies, and academia when important issues need to be addressed like the one we're discussing today, tomorrow, and on Friday. Our events have very strong participation from the private sector and from governmental agencies and policy-making bodies from all around the world, again, as is evidenced today. We've become very actively engaged in broadly the FinTech area and blockchain. So recently, we conducted a study in partnership with the World Economic Forum on the complex re regulatory framework of global fintech. And we did a wonderful analysis of how is regulation being handled in different countries, the main markets where fintech is uh, becoming extremely important. So we looked at a comparative analysis of the US, UK, and China. And uh, uh, the report is available on our website. So we are uh, welcome to take a look at that. Tomorrow we'll be releasing another report, and this is going to be about blockchain and its role in financial inclusion. So we want to continue to do more and more in FinTech, and I started to think about curriculum issues. Our students are very interested in FinTech. So from a curriculum point of view, how do we train the future generation uh, who are going to be working in this space and uh, still a relatively new area from uh, a curriculum innovation point of view. I invite you to learn about the center by visiting our website. And again, welcome to Georgetown and welcome to the McDonough School. Now it gives me great pleasure to welcome Perry Ann Boring, the founder and president of the Chamber of Digital Commerce, Perry Ann. All right, thank you, Rena. And welcome to the DC Blockchain Summit. Yes. 
rain or snow or wind or sun or shine, we will make this happen. Um, it's exciting. Uh, it's very exciting to be back at Georgetown for our second annual event. Um, I would first like to recognize our partner, um, Georgetown University's Center for Financial Markets and Policy. Rena, we are truly honored to call you our partner and our friend. Georgetown has so shown so much leadership in Washington, D.C. in terms of supporting financial and technology innovations in the blockchain sector. This is very important for our industry, considering this is the global, um, one of the most powerful cities in the world. To have Georgetown support these efforts means a lot um, to the chamber, but also the blockchain industry overall. So thank you for inviting the Chamber of Digital Commerce, our members, our friends, our partners, our sponsors, and our many friends um, all throughout government who are here today to your beautiful campus um, to have a, a day and a half dialogue on all things blockchain. The Chamber of Digital Commerce is the world's largest organization that represents the blockchain industry. Uh, today we announced 20 new member companies, which brings our membership to over 100 members. We organize and oversee many different initiatives on behalf of the industry. I've listed these for you on page two of your program book, and I will give you um, just a quick overview about some of the work that we're doing at the Chamber. Um, we formed an initiative called the Blockchain Alliance, and this is the official public-private partnership with law enforcement. Um, tomorrow, we'll be announcing our Blockchain Intellectual Property Council, and this addresses IP-related issues for this industry. We also have the Digital Asset Accounting Consortium, which is spearheading accounting standards for digital assets. Um, our Global Blockchain Forum is an international policy partnership with policy experts around the globe. Many of them have flown very far to be here today. Um, we also have a Smart Contracts Alliance, which is educating policymakers and the business community on smart contracts, and our state working group, which is working with 15 states and counting on the appropriate legal regulatory treatments of blockchain-based technologies. Since our inaugural summit in March of 2016, the Chamber has accomplished a number of important industry milestones. To highlight just a few of these for you, in just the last year, we have testified before U.S. Congress on blockchain. We've taken over 100 meetings and briefings with members of Congress, regulators, policymakers, including the SEC, the CFTC, the Federal Reserve, the FDIC, among many others. We launched the DC Blockchain Center, which is our incubator in partnership with 1776. Our membership has grown over 100% since uh, March of 2016. Um, in the past year, we welcomed our first five, Fortune 500 members, including IBM and Microsoft. We welcomed our first member bank, USAA, our first uh, credit union, Digital Federal Credit Union, and we also hosted the world's first smart contract symposium last December in New York City. And in the past year, we've also published two white papers, one on smart contracts and one with the Structured Finance Industry Group, and copies of those are at the Deloitte table out in the lobby. It has truly been a remarkable year for the Chamber. Thank you to all of our members for making this possible and for your support. This could not be possible, um, the Chamber in this event, without the incredible passion and energy of the entire team at the Chamber. And I want to recognize my team. Um, I'm pretty sure they are running around making sure all this is orderly. But if you are in here, please stand. Um, Dan Spooler, who's our Director of Member Services. <laughs> Marie Knowles, our Director of Marketing and Programming. <laughs> Hiding in the corners. Ralph Banco, my Senior Counselor. I truly can oh, and Jason Brett, the Director of Operations. Please get to know these guys if you don't know them already. Uh, I truly cannot put into words um, the incredible amount of time, dedication uh, that these folks have put into this event, into the chamber. 
Um, and last um, but not least, I want to thank my mom and dad who are here. Oh, this is my mom. <laughs> My parents didn't make it last year, um, but they have flown all the way in from Florida in the freezing cold, and they're not snowbirds, they're from Florida, um, to be here, so that shows a lot. Um, and my brother, Jeff, who's in the front row. So I can assure you, this will be the most boring blockchain event you have ever been to. If you can come up with a better boring joke, please tell me. Um, this year's summit has completely eclipsed last year's summit, and we truly made history last year with this event. It was really the first time that we had ever seen Fortune 500s come out and publicly talk about what they were doing in blockchain. This year, our, our summit sold out a couple of weeks ahead of time. Um, we cannot accommodate any more people, um, so I want to give a, a huge Shout out to our live stream sponsor, Chain. Those of you who are watching online, um, thank you, um, Adam Ludwin and Chain, uh, for making it possible because there are a ton of people who are dialing in online. Uh, this year, we're welcoming over 400 friends, members, partners, and policymakers from around the world um, that um, are part of this global blockchain ecosystem. Um, we have people here today from Australia, Canada, Dubai, the European Union, Mexico, and the United Kingdom. Did I miss any? Switzerland. Brazil. Ukraine. Amazing. So over the next day and a half, you're going to hear from some of the brightest minds in blockchain, financial services, the insurance industry, healthcare, and others. Um, so to kick off the conference, we're going to announce the winners of our blockchain and healthcare codeathon. Um, this codeathon was hosted in partnership with the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, Office of the National Coordinator for Health and Information Technology. Longest name you could come up with. Um, I'd now like to introduce you to Debbie Bucci from HHS to tell you a little bit about what our teams have been up to for the past 24 hours. Thanks, Debbie. Wow, what quite a, quite a crowd. So, um, thanks to the Chamber of Digital Commerce, we we. Um, Health and Human Services Office and National Coordinator, where I am, have been focusing on innovative technologies for some while. And we met in September when we had hosted a uh, we uh, challenge back then to talk about blockchain and healthcare to see what was out there. When we first issued everybody, we thought that when we looked, there was possibly three. We had heard from MIT, there was something going on in Estonia, and then there were some Phillips Labs, and that's all we heard. Well, when we issued the challenge, expecting maybe 15 or 20, we got over 77 submissions. So we used that information and the lessons learned from a workshop that we did in September to use this as a follow-on to do a specific codeathon, a 24-hour 20 codeathon, and we focused on three specific use cases that we had some of the use cases that um, had learned from the from the workshop. And we focused on identity management APIs, metadata tagging for provenance information and other sources of information, and then data aggregation. So between the storm and no storm, the ice and no ice, we had over, we had nine teams uh, sub uh, participate and it and we streamed online say, thanks to Jonathan Holt who's you know, one of the hosts that to actually have a hopefully a very successful um, codathon and the the finalists are here in the audience waiting for the the announcement so for that let me go ahead and announce uh, uh, present some of the the uh, the judges. And one of the first ones is Ted Tanner, who is the co-founder and CTO of Pokedot. And you can go ahead and sit, go ahead and stand up. We're going to come on stage. Then Jonathan Holt, who is co-founder and executive vice president of Seek Tech Diagnostics, founder and CEO of Transendex. Our savior in the codathon. He did all the web hosting. <laughs> he was he was really amazing for that. Greg Shannon, who couldn't make it this afternoon because he's a chief scientist at CERT division um, at Carnegie Mellon, Mellon, 
And then finally, last but not least, Hector Rodriguez from um, Microsoft. And so I'm going to turn it over to um, Perry Ann to go and make the actual awards. All right, and so some of our teams, per, because of the weather, participated remotely. Um, if you are here, when I call your name, you're going to stand up. You're going to greet Mr. Brett. You're going to shake each of the judges' hands, and then you're going to join Dan on the other side of the stage, and we're going to take a team photo of the winners. All right, so um, we have three third-place winners. There's three third place winning teams. All right, this feels like a beauty pageant. <laughs> All right, there's... <laughs> which one's which? Um, all right, um, that has happened before. All right. Um, the three third place winners are MCDC, Mesh Health and D3 Health. All right, and while they are getting their photos taken, I just want to impress upon all of you, the importance of what's happening right now. This is not just any hack, I mean, Codathon. Um, this is the first time a US government organization has ever sponsored a blockchain Codathon. That's a pretty big milestone. <laughs> Um, to put all this in perspective, three years ago, when we first launched the chamber, the sentiment in DC and with government especially about this technology was that of fear, anxiety, and skepticism. There was a senator who called for a ban on Bitcoin. Multiple federal agencies issued warnings about the dangers of this technology. The entire industry's reputation was at a pretty low point. And the fact that we are here today, standing on a stage with Debbie, the US Department of Health and Human Services, where we just completed this event, um, this is truly a historic moment. And uh, the Chamber could not be more proud to be the co-sponsor of this Codathon. All right. Now we have uh, two um, second place teams, and they are uh, Nucleus Health, <laughs> and TMI. <laughs> and that means the first place team is Health Passport. Mm -hmm. 